So we've been looking at images, and I was noting some of these options, some of these items for your images. I'll mention one more thing. Uh, the, the items there, the only one that matters for SEO is the alt text, but actually there's another thing that matters that you can't really change here. You have the, um, the file name. I uploaded koala.jpg, and there's no way for, for me really to change that. It's been uploaded already. And this is something that matters for SEO nowadays. So your images file name, image file names matter for SEO. So a bad file name and a good file name a bad file name is basically img003.jpg. That's exactly what comes out of your digital camera, doesn't it? When you take a photo, your camera is just going to name it with some sequential number or maybe a date. Those uh, file names are bad for SEO. They, they don't have any meaning. Maybe having a date, that's still not meaningful. So a good uh, version instead is chocolatecake.jpg. Something that explains what the picture is. The search engine see that stuff too. So if you've got images that have that file name, that's not helping you. If you've got this file name, that's helping you. Actually, there's one more that I recommend. Great. Is uh, a mixture of both. That looks like a long file name and kind of redundant, but here's why I like this instead. What came out of my camera was this, and my company gets hired to do product, product photography. If we were then to change the name of all of the images to something else, and we need to get back to the original file, well, the original file, I have all of the original files saved on an external hard drive safe somewhere. And if we're only working with this one, there's no way for me to know what was the original file. I took away the file name of the original file. I'm not going to find it in my records, in my hard drive, in my, ex in, my in my external hard drive. So if I keep the original file name and add the new keyword file name, that keyword helps for SEO, and then this helps me to go find the original file back on my hard drive. So I like to do that. And I've had a challenge getting the rest of my team members to do it, but I think I've got it. It's yes. okay to use dashes in those names? Yes, and it's, it's uh, recommended. Uh, instead of keeping it all together, because then the search engine can't quite differentiate words anymore. You want to separate them. You don't, you don't want to use spaces, because that can cause trouble in the file system. You could use underscores. Underscores is fine, and dashes is fine. But dashes are easier to type. You just hit the, da the dash, and you go on. An underscore is shift dash. It's half a millisecond, but you do it over and over, and you see it add up. So I recommend dashes, yes. So you, you, know, you, keep, you keep downloading a Pixabay photo, you can't change that name. No, you can. Yeah, when you download it from Pixabay, it's going to give it to you as something like cupcake-55598. Right. Sure. Right. You can change that if you want. Even on a Pixabay... Right. After you download it, you mean upload? After I after I upload it back here? No, that's exactly right. After I upload it, I cannot change it anymore. Okay. So, so I would before want you upload it, you need to change the name. Yes. Okay. Question, Mansoor. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is the same question. Same question. I mean, yeah. We should download it on our computer and then we rename it mm -hmm. and then. Yes. So I'll say here before you upload to WordPress. WordPress, uh, change file name. You can't do it afterwards. You cannot do it afterwards. Afterward. So, Koala, I already uploaded it. If I really wanted to change it, I would have to delete it. I would have to download it, delete the old version, and then change it, and then upload it. But then I lose my, I lose what I wrote here. 
that's okay for a practice file. But moving forward, I want to pay attention to my file names also. They help. They matter regarding SEO, and we cannot change it in WordPress at the moment. Maybe on a future version, you'll be able to click to edit the, the name on the site, but not, not at the moment. Before uploading to WordPress, change file name. Before uploading to WordPress, optimize your image. Optimize is balancing file size. Quality. Every picture, as a web designer, we need to think about this. Every picture, we have two things that are on a balance uh, visual quality and file size. Right now, this picture is a file size of 768 kilobytes. Basically, 1000 kilobytes is one megabyte. 1,000 megabytes is 1 gigabyte. 1,000 gigabytes is 1 terabyte. So this is almost, this is, a, this is 3 quarters of 1 megabyte on one picture. And I uploaded 7 of them. So it's getting more and more, my site is getting bigger and bigger. We want to balance. We have a way to shrink this down. I can, we could shrink it down to uh, 100 kilobytes. It's even smaller, meaning it'll download faster. The more kilobytes and the more megabytes something is, the slower it downloads. So a bigger file size downloads slower. The problem is, usually when you decrease the file size, you also affect the visual quality. This one right now looks pretty good. I see a lot of fur and detail, and the eyes are pretty in focus. But once I start to decrease this file size, it's going to get blocky and choppy and pixelated and weird looking. So that's our balance. If I want visually good picture, it's going to be a big size, file size. If I want a low file size to download, it's going to be a low quality. The picture will look bad. So this is all I can kind of say. I can't quite further really teach this. It depends on every single photo. People will ask me, well, what dimensions should I use? I can't quite answer that. What file size should I use? I can't quite answer that. It depends on your photo, your needs, your site, your design. This photo is like this because of these dimensions and this file size and this quality necessary. That may be what you need. I may need my photos to be 700 kilobytes. But if you really want some sort of guidelines, and these will always change depending on your needs. Basic guidelines. Basic picture guidelines. Maximum dimension. Of 1920 pixels. 1920 pixels. Either 1920 horizontal, if it's a wide picture, or 1920 vertical. Whatever the width is, it'll stay in proportion, doesn't matter. But the longest edge, 1920 pixels. That's pretty common for a very good sized image nowadays. You could make things smaller. But if it's bigger than that, you're wasting people's bandwidth. You're, you're making a picture too high quality. My photo out of my camera, when I first get it out of my camera, is over 6,000 pixels. It's a pretty good camera with a lot of detail, way too much detail. This is almost six times more quality than necessary for my guideline, 2,000 to 6,000. So how to do this, I'll talk about it in a moment. But uh, dimensions, uh, maximum dimension, uh, 1920. Um, guideline for file size, I would say between 100 kilobytes and 300. You can even go less than 100. If you can get it less than 100, great. But 
the, as you get it smaller, the visual quality suffers. Isn't the resolution what's important to, for a JPEG normally on a website? Sort of. Uh, they often go hand in hand. I might upload a picture that's 300 DPI resolution, but that also is because it's 5,000 pixels wide. On a technical level, we can have a 72 pixel sized image still be uh, very high quality or very low quality. So resolution isn't the big factor, really it is the dimensions of the, of the picture. Lots of dots, lots of pixels give you a bigger size, bigger download size. So notice it's not even listed anywhere. This is most likely a 72 or maybe 96 DPI resolution image, but it doesn't quite matter. It's these dimensions here. This, this is the raw data in this image, which is causing 768 kilobytes, as well as compression and other things. These are the basic guidelines. Now, how to do it, how to resize things. We can take a quick look under Edit Image. Uh, it's recommended to do this before you upload, but we have some basic editing tools here in WordPress. If you click Edit Image, we have rotation, cropping, right here, scaling. Well, if I uploaded it as 3000, I could change it to 1900 and scale it. But you'll actually have two copies of it on your, on your site you'll have the original 3,000 pixel sized one and the one you've resized. So again, it's still better to upload it the right dimensions. Let's say I only want a piece. It's not obvious, but if you click and drag on the picture itself, click and drag a box, then you can crop what you want to keep. I believe, however, you still are left with a piece or a version of the picture large and then a cropped one. So again, it's better to upload already a size, the right size. The right size depends on your theme. My theme has a thumbnail size of 200 by 200. So okay, that's different than what I said. I said 1900. But if your theme needs a 200 by 200, then make your pictures that size, depending on your theme. So there's a couple of editing tools here, resizing, cropping, but I would recommend you do it before you upload. Use your computer's built-in photo editor or viewer. On the Mac, the basic built-in photo management tool iPhoto, I guess. It has some basic uh, basic editing tools. On Windows, Windows 10, the, the newer ones, Windows 8 and Windows 10, they have a basic photo editing built in. I think even maybe Windows 7 has some basic photo editing built in. But better yeah, not too much on this old older Windows. But uh, Rec recommendations are use your computer's built in photo editor for basic, and you have advanced Photoshop, or um, you have also Photoshop elements. Photoshop traditionally on its own used to cost around at least $300, $500 Photoshop. They've changed the pricing of it, but it's still not free. Photoshop Elements is like the little brother of Photoshop. You can get that at Costco and Fry's between $79 and $99 one-time cost. They often have coupons that I see at Fry's. Normal price is $99, and I often see it being sold for $79. Photoshop is much more expensive. Photoshop Elements, about 79 to 99 I haven't checked the price very recently of the full Photoshop. I have the, I have the bundle on my computers, and I forget how much it costs, but 
just the old days, it was well, like three hundred. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's a constant payment. You know, you're paying yeah. thirty dollars a month or whatever, m month after month, and then a couple of years you've paid five hundred dollars for it. Yeah, I held out for a long, long time too until very recently. They had a, they had a, um, a, a Black Friday sale actually last month for one year cheaper, half price, but yeah. one. One year later, it'll go back to the full price. Now, here is then one more, which is called Pixlr. The great thing about this one, it's free. We like this. Yes. This one is between basic and intermediate. It's like um, the little, little brother of Photoshop Elements. Pixlr.com. Let's go check this out. Open your web browser and go to Pixlr.com. And this is basically like a classic free version of Photoshop where you can crop photos, add text and filters, resize them, do all of those things that, that I'm recommending for you to do. Change the file size so it downloads quickly and the visual quality. Do all of that for free at pixlr.com. There's, there's even an app. You can get the app or go to the website. pixlr.com, pixlr.com. If you scroll down, we have Pixlr Express, which is a quick way. This might be even faster. With Express, you can resize and crop and do basic edits to an image. Or you go to Pixel Editor and it's like Photoshop. You have these other tools for selections and gradients and much more advanced features. Does anyone have any experience in, in Photoshop? A couple of people. So if you go here, it's like Photoshop for free online. You just need a web browser. And you can go explore that on your own. It's pretty straightforward. You launch it, you upload files, etc. Make edits. And it's been around a while. I, I, I think I've seen the Pixlr website up for, it feels like 10 years. I've been recommending this uh, site to classes for years and years, and I knew about it before I was teaching these classes. So it's been around a while. That's the big discussion on on images. Any any questions on images and, and such before we go on? Notice this is our media library. It's not our picture library. What other kind of media exist? Video. So regarding video, I would say do not use your media library for video. Notes on video. Don't upload video to your own site. Upload to a dedicated video platform, such as YouTube, Vimeo, Um, you can upload video now to Twitter and to Facebook and such. Uh, here's one that's very new that I need to research myself. Vidme, not vidme.com, vid.me, www.vid.me. So these are, these are a couple of places dedicated to video. So why video takes a lot of space on a server? A lot. 700 kilobytes for a picture is about half a second of video. And I've got a five minute video to upload. So I work with video a lot and I'm often uploading videos that are 800 megabytes to you know two gigabytes. Very large files. Um, so uploading it to your own server if eventually I set up a, a host monster account, they have different tiers of service. For $5 a month, I get 2 gigabytes of space. 
for $20 a month, I get 10 gigabytes of space. So the more I pay, the more space I have. And I'm going to use up all my space on my, on my video blog site. Let's say on Victor's Bakery, I'm uploading... I'm trying to sell cupcakes and such, but I'm uploading videos to video blogs. I'm going to use up all of my server space and my bandwidth. Bandwidth is basically someone connects to your site and downloads the content. You have limits that these providers sell you on bandwidth is one of the things that a lot of people don't know. If I'm buying an account on GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, there's also a bandwidth limitation. Every month, people can download one gigabyte from your site. So all of the traffic that I get to my site has to be under a gigabyte. One person can connect 10 times to my site and download lots of things. And once I re reach out, reach past my bandwidth, then GoDaddy is going to make my site slow or tell me to upgrade and so forth. So instead of using up your own resources, upload to YouTube, upload to Vimeo, to Vidme, or other sites that focus on that. And what you can do is you can embed the video. You can you can make the video from the YouTube page show up on your own site. Let's take a quick look how that works. So I'm not going to upload a video. Yes? So in those sites you have that you I'm assuming it's your own videos. There's not much. Well, you know what? I guess they would be just for free. I think that they, they, they would be theirs and that would make sense. How about music tracks? What, is, what about that? How much space would that be? If you did like a two and a half minute, two minute music. Audio, I would, uh, I would think about putting it on my own server. Uh, it doesn't take up as much as a video. Mm -hmm. But there's, um, so I'll say either way. Uh, either put it on your own server or on a dedicated platform. And for dedicated platforms, some good ones there are SoundCloud.com. It's like the YouTube of audio. I like using that one. Um, there's also AudioMac.com. Probably a few others. But uh, I use SoundCloud a lot, and I've used AudioMac. So again, if I don't want to use up my own, my own resources, I have another spot to upload it to. You know, pictures, definitely I'm uploading them to my site. But video, definitely not. And audio, either way, but usually in the real world, I'm uploading it for myself or clients onto SoundCloud. And there's ways to embed your media from these other networks to your own site, which I'll show in a moment. Use your own site or upload to a platform. So if I wanted to add, let's do a quick example of adding a YouTube video to my site. I'm not going to upload the video, but we're going to show how to embed. So any, any multimedia, any multimedia from another site you can usually embed it to your site. Most multimedia video audio has embed code that they give us to add it to our site. Let's check the example here with YouTube. Let's say we'll create a brand new post. Hover over posts, add a new post. Just to make this up, we'll have an article called How to Bake a Cake. So this is going to be a brand new post on our site, focused on video, so we should set the format over here to video. Not necessary, but the format is useful for you to further organize your content. It helps a little with SEO, but if you don't change it, it's not a big deal. There's a couple of ways to do it. Very straightforward way. WordPress makes it very easy to embed multimedia from many popular websites. So I'm going to keep this window open, and I'm going to open a new window. 
or a new tab, and I'll go to youtube.com. I need to go get the code, the link, to a video. So you can go to YouTube and search anything you want. Let's say, let's say, obviously the part I cannot do or show you is, let's, let me show you how to upload to YouTube. That's not the point of this class. You can take my social media class to learn that. But let's say you've got your video on YouTube, but you want to find a video, I'm just going to search how to bake a cake. I'm going to find any, any video there, how to bake a sonic cake. So there's a cake right here. Just find any video and click on it after the ad. So there's, um, there's a video. Below the video of every YouTube video, by default, you have share. People can turn that off. So if you don't see share, someone turned it off. So don't try to use their video. Well, if it's my video, my videos have share. And here's just some example video that I found. I click share. There's the link. So I can copy that link and just paste it into my WordPress post. And that's it. That video will appear on that post once I publish. It's not taking up any space on my own site. It's not slowing down my site when they connect. It's all coming from the YouTube servers, which are the most best servers in the world. They're running 24 hours a day, have like 2 million gigs of RAM, infinite hard drive space. It works in every country in the world, basically. So I'm using their servers, their servers. So I'm copying the link that's under share of any video and paste. And I paste it. It's usually smart enough to also then actually convert it into the video. It came from that link. And I can further write other things if I want, but I'll just focus on that video. You have a little bit of editing that you can do. If you click on the video, you have you can edit. Not too much really, I guess. Just what's the address and that's it. But you can further type other things on the post. You can add your categories and tags and other things as a normal post. So the user won't really notice or care. Your customers will just see a video, they'll click play. It's on your site, but it's coming from the YouTube site. When you publish that and then visit site, In the blog, here's the latest blog post, there's the video. You're not going to want to eat this cake, actually. I've seen this video. <laughs> See that? on the site all that I all that I did was I just copied and pasted the link okay. so all right let me let me see I just pasted it and then it, it put it but you might not have copied the right link so let's Just because 
Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, regarding that's regarding video um, and related to sound, uh, you can look at that on your own. But when you have some sound over on SoundCloud or Audio Mac, etc., you'll also see usually some song or speech or whatever it has a share button. And uh, you, you copy the code and you paste it, the embed code, and then it activates on your own post, your own site. That's all you really need to do. Mm -hmm. the WordPress can also the video, video? Yes, that's how you want to do that because it doesn't let you upload video, right? So you want to use the link to the video instead. And then they can see the video. Yes, but it has to be on YouTube first. So if it was your own video, you have to upload it to YouTube first and then get the link to use on your own site. And there is a website that you can edit and publish on your video when you pick by cell phone. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them now. Uh, you, YouTube itself. That's the, the big one that I would recommend, and I, there's also Vimeo and vid.me. There's lots of them, but those are some that I recommend. We can, so first we should download the video that we take from camera. Actually, if you get the YouTube app, you can upload it into YouTube directly from your phone. You don't have to download it off of your phone first. And then you get editing? Yes. Basic before, editing. It's not... Before, before upload. No, you can uh, you can edit it even after upload, but it's just basic editing, not not a lot of text or or other editing, but some basic editing. Yes. If I get a view, I can see it on on, on my page. If I don't do that, if I go to my page, I don't see it. So you you did visit you went to visit site. If I visit the site, and then you went to the blog, and it's not showing up. It's not showing. Oh, this is sad. Okay. So it's the same thing as hidden side, right? So I won't see it. Hmm. If I hit block, I won't see it. Did you click? You but you can the view. I can see it. But did you click updates? Yeah. You can I change updates. So when I'm in the dashboard, I go to post. I click on this one there. And I click on update there. It's right there. So then I go to see it. I don't see it. It's well, right. after it's in the block. It's a different block. You run a you run a block post for me. So it's a different block. You run a block post, so it's in a block section. Really? It's just a different block. So you go here. Oh, you don't block. Yeah, because we had uploaded it to the blog, not to the home. You were looking at home page. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, switch gears to a couple of uh, other 
points on the syllabus. We talked about pictures and a little video, little audio, but that's going to depend on your site. Um, let's talk about some other things that are useful on your site. Um, if we look at if we look at the home screen, there is the home page that we made, and there's nothing really interesting there. We can edit it, but this is the home page. If you go someplace else like contact, we're looking at the contact page, so we would edit the contact page. On the blog, if you click on blog, we're on the blog page. And this was a little different than it has a sidebar. On the right side, it has all of these elements. I don't see that in other, on other screens like uh, contact. You can activate a sidebar on different pages. Depending on the theme, we may have a sidebar on the left, on the right. We may be a footer bar. It depends on the, on the design. You may, have a, you may have a sidebar on the foot, in the footer. So this particular design, the 2017 theme, has a sidebar. Let's take a moment to, to, to look at how we can edit sidebars and what we can do. There's all of these items here so far, recent posts. It's showing all of the recent blog posts that I've written are listed here. We can edit that. Someone wrote a comment. Well, this is the built-in comment, but we can see who has commented on our blog posts, archives. If I'm writing blogs on a long-term basis, I wrote a blog in May, I wrote one in June, I wrote one in January, they will be listed there. Any categories I created are listed. I don't want to show uncategorized. They have this other thing, meta, uh, site admin. Well, that's one of the things definitely I want to change. I don't want to have I don't want to have the front door there for people to try to log into my site. So I need to edit. The point is I need to edit my sidebar. Well, also, I've got a search in the sidebar. The way to edit the sidebar is you go back to the dashboard. And it doesn't make too much sense, but you go to Appearance and Widgets. Appearance and Widgets is where you edit your sidebar. And in this case is where I edit the sidebar, where I edit the footer number one and number two. So this design has three places, one on the side and two on the foot, in the footer, for me to change things. And these are the things I showed you a moment ago. The search box, the recent posts, categories, meta, all of those items. So WordPress themes have WordPress themes often have sidebars or footer or header areas. Edit them in Dashboard, Appearance, Widgets. Edit sidebars by using widgets. That's kind of the logic there. Uh, the, the menu item is not called sidebars, it's called widgets. So you can use widgets in a sidebar or in a footer in a header. If the theme gives you a header spot, you can, you can edit that. If it doesn't give you that, it, it doesn't give it to you. It doesn't give you that feature. Sometimes I see themes that have two sidebars, sidebar one, sidebar two, so one on the left, one on the right. If it doesn't give you a left sidebar, it doesn't have a left sidebar. That's it. It depends on the theme. And this screen's kind of confusing, but the way it works is we've got available widgets, which is actually kind of a, a thing you can open and close. If you click on available widgets, opens and close. And we've also got a section of inactive widgets, and then the actual widgets on the side. Depending on the theme, it may tell you, okay, sidebar, add widgets here to appear on your sidebar, although it still doesn't tell me left or right. Footer 1 and 2, add widgets here to appear on Twitter. Depending on the theme, sometimes it tells you, items here will appear on the right. It doesn't quite tell me, but I've already seen where the sidebar is. Out of curiosity, well, how does the footer and the 1 and 2 look? 
here's how we can do this. You can drag a widget from the left into the right. We have, for example, a calendar. I want to show a calendar in the footer. One. So let's try this out. Drag calendar one, calendar into footer one. And then just for practice, drag search into footer two. There's details that appear. Don't worry about the details yet, but drag these items there, click save, and then visit site. Just putting things which we can we can fix, we can change. But I'm putting a calendar in footer one and a search in footer two. Then click save on each of, each of these. Visit site. If I visit site, then down on the footer, past this little line, I see a calendar and a search. If I go look at the contact page, it's still there. If I go look at the blog page, it's down there. So there's like an invisible two-column layout down here, left and right, footer one, footer two. I put a calendar, I put a search. Yes? So under the blogs column, I see only two. This was a this was a menu. I made a menu to display two categories. Okay, gotcha. And the other one is five recently. I think that's the standard or something. Yes. So I I just Well, what I'm saying is, if I wanted to display three or four items here, these are all based on categories. If I wanted to display different blog posts here, five or of them, that's a little bit different. So is what, you're, what you're asking is, why does it only show two here? Yeah, you could add more. Yes, you have to do it over, over the, at the menu. Edit the menu, and then you can add more categories. Mm -hmm. The search only search inside the blog? Inside the web or everything? Inside your site. Nothing, nothing, more. nothing outside, only on your site. Words and titles? Definitely titles of posts. Um, I think only titles of posts. Maybe titles of pages, but not words, not tags, just titles of posts. So if I search cake, it's showing me how to bake a cake and three-layer cake, birthday cakes for 10-year-olds. So it's searching by the titles okay. of Bir my post. Birthday, for example. Yes, I tried birthday. But we have so there's a post okay. of birthday cake. Bash. It still showed it, yeah. So it is finding the word bash inside of the post. I guess, would, I guess I would find also yeah. terms in an article. That's good. Okay, back to widgets. Oh, yes. Um, it, it puts uh, a calendar in every, every page. Yes. If you only wanted it on one page, do you have that option? Or no? You have that option, but interestingly, there's another widget that activates the ability to show the widgets. It's, it's kind of odd. Uh, we'll see it in a moment. But yes, there's a way to only have certain widgets appear on certain screens. Right now it's kind of universal. So if we go back to our, our widgets. We, these are the widgets that are built in at the moment based on mostly the, the theme and plugins. We haven't talked about plugins yet too much. So widgets, these are the available widgets, the available features. So an archive is a monthly archive of your site's posts. A calendar, this is a calendar of your site's posts. It's not like a calendar where someone can register or add a note. It's not that, that kind of calendar. It's just a calendar to show you. In my case, I wrote something on the 5th and something on the 9th and then the 11th. So that's why those are highlighted. There are articles that were written on those days. That's that kind of calendar. Other kinds of calendars, or I can set appointments and such. 
those are most likely going to be a plugin, and we'll have a deep discussion on plugins later. But these are possible items that I that I can have, and depending on the 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 widget, see if you if you open if you go back to open calendar, you don't have very many options here. You can give it a title, but no other options. You can delete it. If I were to change that and say, you know, my calendar. If I add a title to that widget, all that that really does for that widget is it adds that text above that widget. Not that Im impressive. So some widgets have very little customization. The search also just has a title. Whatever I write here is what's going to appear above the search box, which is not that useful. Just text. But some widgets do have more customization. Recent posts lets me choose to show how many posts at a time to display in this widget. Five. If I had 20 blog posts, I, I will show five under the recent posts. You can see recent posts under the blog recent posts. So it's showing five. I've only written four, so it's all four. But if I were to set that to only two, and I turn on display post date, I've customized the recent post widgets a bit, and the way it looks now is there's before, there's after. Only two are showing, and it shows the date it was published. Well, how do I change it to put a picture, or how do I change it to move it to the right? can't do that. If it doesn't have the customization in the widget, in the widget here, we can't do it. Actually, we can do anything we want, but it does require that you go to the editor. And if you recall, the editor is, behind the curtains, all of the raw code. So if you're comfortable there, you can do anything. But for most of us, if a plugin or a, or a theme or a widget or whatever doesn't give us the option, in short, we can't do it. We have to do custom coding if we want customization. Let's see what else. Recent comments. Show number of comments. Okay, archives. Displays a drop down. I, I don't know what that means, so it, it's no big deal turning one of these things on and previewing it. So by turning on the option of drop-down, that's what that looks like. If I have lots of months, they would all display there. All seven months would be a long list. If I turn on that option, now it's a drop-down to save space. Meta is the one where it has all these options. Log in. Hey hackers, here's my site login. No, I, I don't want that. So I wanted to turn that one off, but that meta widget has no customization. I have to turn the whole thing off. So let's say I don't want to make it obvious for people to log in to my site. Open the meta and click delete. And now that meta uh, widget is not active and on the site it no longer has a spot for, pe for, the, for the wrong people to log in to check my site admin. It's gone delete any widget. Well, deleting the widget is works, but deleting the widget removes all of its customization. Where I, where I change here to 2, display date, if I click delete, it's gone. And if I took a lot of effort to craft these things, it's, it's gone. So instead of deleting, this is why you have this inactive widget area. If I close the available widgets, I have inactive. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. So I don't want to delete the customized settings I did for each of these. I want to drag them to the inactive area. I'm going to do that. I'm going to have us do this. Let's try this. Uh, either delete everything here, or drag them to the inactive area. I'm going to, I'm going to drag them to the inactive area. Right there. Just dragging them out, deleting that one. So uh, um, you see here, I've dragged them to inactive, and now when I view 
the site, there's nothing in the sidebar. The design also changes a little bit. Nothing in the sidebar. If I drag it back, I had uh, recent posts, I customized that one. The customization is still there. Two plus a date. So on the site, I have it back. The inactive widget area is useful if you don't want to lose your if you don't want to lose your customization. Be careful because at the end you have clear inactive widgets. That's going to be a delete for everything that you've saved there, and there's no undo. This is one of the screens that I hope the WordPress team improves a little bit. There's no undos here. If I put a, a copy of the archive here. And if I change all of these settings, if I don't remember what I used to have, there's no way to bring back the old version. There's no undo. If I move it over here and then clear them on accident, there's no undo. So this can be very detrimental. Yes? So what you're saying is, if you drag it to clear, inactive, it will disappear forever? You don't drag it. If I click that, oops, all of it's gone. So you were dragging it this way, it will just gain yes. center. Yes. If you drag it, right. that's fine. Even if you drag it on top, nothing happens. If you drag it, they will be saved under inactive. If you click, clear it, they'll go away. And it doesn't even warn you. See, it did it right away. Because I was dragging over to that side, but they were not showing up like they were showing on the screen. The problem with that is if I'm dragging it right here, right. that's the wrong place. I have to drag it right here. See how the dotted line appears? So watch this. Yeah, a little bit above it. So here are the built-in ones, a couple of items uh, that you can do if I switch themes. I will probably have more options, like uh, a chat box or something. Later when we talk about plugins, we'll have more widgets. When, I, when we get to the shopping cart features, we'll have, a, we'll have widgets here that say shopping cart, check out now, etc. And then I can customize my design. I can put these widgets into the sidebars to then display this content on the screen. So you have some of these built-in ones. Now let me show you the the most powerful of all of the basic widgets. Now, you can drag them as you see here, but sometimes, like on me, if I scroll down too far, I want to drag one of these up there, but it's, it's out of my screen. I can't find it. You can click one time on any of these. Instead of dragging it, you can click one time. This is where would you like to put it? So if I scroll too far and I can't drag it up, Click on it one time. This is where do you want it. I want to put it into the sidebar. Let's try this one. This is the most powerful basic widget of all. We'll see why. Text. It says arbitrary text or HTML. So if I click Add Widget, all that this is is a little box here for you to write some title. So this is a title. And then content. This is some content. Save. And if I visit my site, that's what I wrote. And you say, why is that the most powerful? It says arbitrary text or HTML. So if I know a little HTML, this is some content, this is a header. If I know some HTML code, it will take my code and process my code. I want to make something bold or big or red color or anything like that, I write the code and it'll activate it. So for example there, I wrote a little bit of HTML code and the result is big text. I can add more code here. You can practice this if you want. Style equals color red semicolon background color colon pink semicolon I'm about to change the color of the text to red and the background color behind the text to pink. 
So there's no buttons here for me to do any styling, but if I know some code, I can write the code. I can make multi-columns here if I know how to write the code. So this is the most powerful one because if I know code, I can write it and it will process it. I can further change the design and do interesting things in these sidebars using the text widgets. If you make changes and save it, then here's my result. Red text, pink background. fancy things that are not um, in any of the design, if I know the code. And I've got a little rounded box, drop shadow, all that fun stuff because of code. Learn how to code for free. I mentioned this previously, w3schools.com. website where you can go and learn all of these codes for free. These widgets, you can add more than one of them. I added one text widget and I can add another one in the same sidebar. Now I've got two text widgets. I can add a calendar to the footer and another calendar to the footer. Sure, for some reason. So I've got two calendars in the footer if I want. What's most common is to use some of these widgets like text because what I've got in this first text widget is just a little text and a little code, but because this says any arbitrary text or HTML. If I go to SoundCloud, where there's audio, here is um, audio podcasts, audio shows. Depending on the website, here's a share button. The share button has code, embed code. Many multimedia websites nowadays have some sort of embed code, and that's HTML. That HTML code, I can then plug into the widget, and on my site I'm about to show them a sound. So this is why this is the most powerful widget. It takes code, it processes it, and now what I have in the sidebar is a sound file. Hello and welcome to another episode of the weekly Liam Campos comic book club. I'm your host, Liam Campos. This is the podcast where I answer, what am I reading this week? One of my hobbies is comic books. I do a podcast every week about comic books. And so here I copied the link to that uh, episode and I pasted it into the widget and now it shows up on the site. Okay. Yes? On the previous page you showed it says WordPress code and have a little box. What do you mean by that? It's either or. Um, or you can press it you want. Yeah. Okay. You can grab this line, this this version of the code to use into your WordPress site. Or if you're using a different kind of site like Joomla or Dreamweaver, I can get the classic HTML code. How did you get the sound? You need to go to SoundCloud and do an account. How do how do how did I upload my sound? You're saying, or how did I put it onto the site? How did you how did you get this to this screen? I went to. 
I went to my, uh, you can go to any account, like, like YouTube, when you search on YouTube, how to bake a cake. So I found a sound on, on SoundCloud, any sound. And then below the sound, it's got the share button, and it's got the embed code. Is it a comic series you made? I made it, yes. I, I like reading and collecting comics, and I publish every week. Uh, you write them and you speak? Or I speak about them, yeah. My, my, co my collection. Original by yourself? So far, yes. I might have guests later. I have a lot to say. I've got more than 2,500 comics, so I have a little bit to say about them. Hmm. So this is the text widget here. And what shows up on the screen is this. It, it's on the sidebar here. People can hear this audio right away built into the site, into the sidebar. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to update it all these series by sound? I mean, I mean every day we download news. Most likely, it's a plug-in. Uh, most likely there is a plugin that lets you do news updates or other kinds of automatic updates. When we talk about the plugins, we'll do some searching and we'll probably find a plugin that does that. So if, if you have that question, probably someone else did also, and there's probably a plugin that answers the question. Okay, so again, if we have a theme that has various sidebar areas, then we've got a place to put widgets. If the theme gave us widgets, or when we talk about plugins, if it gave us widgets, then we have widgets to use. Uh, customizing that I only want this podcast episode on the contact page, it doesn't show up at the moment, but if I wanted to show it up there, there's a different plugin that will let us put widgets and sidebars on specific pages, which we'll look at later. Let's take uh, one more break, one last break. We'll talk a little bit more, but we've, we've looked at multimedia images, sidebars, and such, so it's 8.40. Take a break until 8.50, and then we'll come back.